All right. Well, Brandon, listen. Give us an update on the nuclear disappearance and the firing of more military nuclear officers. Folks, listen to this. This is amazing. You might want to give just a little brief synopsis yeah, of the yeah. whole thing. Go ahead. Well, just this week, uh, Anthony Gucciardi over at StoryLeak.com. Yep. Uh, now, interestingly, he uh, and Alex Jones of InfoWars were the first people. They did. They, they kind of That's combined right. their resources and broke this broke information. You and originally. I were the second. Yeah. Like hours behind them. Yeah, but right, they were right first. behind them. They were so first. This happened on September the 3rd. They mm-hmm. originally break this story that nukes have gone missing from Dias Air Force Base, secret transfer, uh, high-level, dependable source, been a source to them for years. Right. Uh, everybody's freaking out. The base uh, police are freaking out. No signatures, no nothing. All they know is the nukes are leaving. Nukes weren't even supposed to be at this base since the 80s. Right, okay? right. The same day. The same day. Lindsey Graham. On national news. Yes. Uh, goes on uh, national television and gives a speech saying that he has inside information that if we don't bomb Syria and Iran preemptively, this was when all the stuff right. was going on with Syria, right. uh, that Charleston Harbor is going to be nuked. Now, the intel out of Dias to InfoWars was that the nukes were leaving Dias headed to South Carolina. Right. So, inside job. Okay, right. And from- so, and here's what's cool is Lindsey Graham didn't mention that. No. Of course. And the people at Dias didn't mention Lindsey Graham. No. But no. yet, on the same day, yeah. these two things are happening. Now, Go it ahead. comes out weeks later, we find out that on that same day, September the 3rd, that Navy Vice Admiral Tim Giardina was fired. Right, uh, and it turns out it was and some basically. He? he was the second in command of our nuclear arsenal at right. the time. Right. All right. Now it comes out, you know, sometime later in the foreign press originally that he was fired right. the same day. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Of course, then the American press didn't didn't, didn't print. cover it. Of yep. course, they're not allowed to. Right. Not allowed yeah. to cover right. it. State the, press. The Obama press. So now, a couple of weeks later, our number one in charge of the nuclear arsenal is fired. Right. Okay. Shortly after that. Uh, we have some inside sources send P.P. Simmons some information that 19 other nuclear officers were relieved of their command. Right. Uh, then we had a, a, a source get in contact with us um, that gave us information. And by the way, about, we broke that first, and then it was confirmed in the major news that they were fired. Yes, and then we had a source uh, that contacted us directly that gave us detailed inf- inside information into the background of Tim Giardina, the admiral that was second in command that was fired. Right. Okay? So now this week, Gucciardi comes out and says that 34 more nuclear missile launch officers have been relieved of their duty. Are you ready for what they've been fired for? What? For supposedly texting answers to each other in a, uh, in a periodic uh, uh, efficiency test. Hmm. How, how, I wonder how they found out what their texts were. Wonder how, how could they do that? Aren't texts private? Well, it could be because <laughs> the criminals that run our government are spying on everybody. Yeah. Is what it could be. Yeah. Uh, but, again, so they're this could have happened. I mean, just I mean, just think about it. There's 34 guys fired at one time. They're texting answers to each yeah. other on a test. Yeah. You're talking about grown men in our military that are in charge of our nuclear arsenal of launch readiness right. are having to text answers to each other on a preparedness test. Right. Give me a break. That kind of, I mean, that's along the lines of Benghazi happened because of an anti-Muslim Because video. of a video. Yes. Yeah. Which yes. now we know was a complete this lie. This is a government narrative. Right. Now, we've had all kinds of insiders come out with information. None of it has been 100% documented, but that these nukes, uh, one of them, they say, was detonated off the coast of South Carolina. We know right. that the day they claim that happened, that there was an earthquake recorded off the coast of South Carolina. That's right. So this story just continues to build and build and build. Let's keep talking about it. Right. Let's push it into the front. Right. And let's make them respond. Right. So think about the connections here, folks. Dice Air Force Base reports nukes going to South Carolina. On the same day, Lindsey Graham, senator from South Carolina, says, we're going to be nuked in South Carolina if... We don't bomb Syria. Yeah. Then we find out a few weeks later that all of these military officials are being fired who are in charge of the nukes. Then we find out that there is an earthquake right off of South Carolina, off of Charleston Harbor, 4.7 on the Richter scale, uh, and a mile deep of water, 600 miles off the coast. Right. And the foreign press is reporting that's where they dumped the nukes. That's right. That's right. That they were supposed to detonate in South Carolina. And let me just make a prediction. This is just a gut feeling. Yeah. I think this will be the next tinfoil hat conspiracy story that we're proven right on. Yeah. This happened. 
Yeah. I, I mean, I just believe that in all of my heart. Yeah. Too these, many, these, too many connections. Yeah. There's too many coincidences. Too many connections. Yeah. You know, eventually, like Mike Shoesmith has documented, it goes from conspiracy theory to conspiracy theory. story to conspiracy, conspiracy fact. fact. Right. And we are pushing up against fact we're, right now. Right. We're not there yet, but, but we're pushing. We are getting. We're there, pushing right. up against. And by the way, if we discover we're wrong, we'll tell you that too. That's right. Okay? And that's what separates us from the liberals. Yes. yes. <laughs> Let's take a phone call because Aaron has been waiting and uh, listening to Freedom Friday. Aaron, welcome to Freedom Friday. Thanks for listening. You want to talk about these nukes? You've got something for Brandon. Go ahead, Aaron. Well, I, I just, um, I, I'm just in utter. The article that. The article that I read, I read just read an article about this today, and the article that I read said that the person who was supposed to be respond. And I'm not going to say that person's name because everybody knows who I'm talking about. I'm not going to mention his name. I want to know how in the hell, in the name of all, everything that is holy, that if that person is responsible for trying to set off those nukes inside this country, how is that person not? locked up at this very moment. Yeah. What, what has happened to our government? There have to be people at the highest levels of power that are aware that yeah. this happened. Well, Brandon, Why is nothing being done? And I just read a list of the, of, the, of the generals and the officers that have been either forced into early retirement or have been outright fired since this new administration think, well, has we've, come in. We've, we've got that list. Yeah. And listen, that's an well, excellent... I mean, I, well, my, my point is, I'm sorry, Carl, my point is, it's, it's, I'm petrified. Yeah. Isn't this not sending up red flags all over the place? Where is everybody Yeah, Where's that? the media? Let's let yeah. Brandon deal, deal with that. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron. God well, bless you. Yeah. The, the, the quick answer to that question is, the information that's come, come out seems to be that if, in fact, all of this is true in the way that it went down, the nuke gets detonated off the coast instead of in Charleston, that... We do have some heroes still left within our American military and our armed forces uh, and the, uh, the higher ranks of, of, those, of our armed forces because apparently that's why the nuke was detonated 600 miles offshore, if that is the case. Right. Um, now, the, the next question that pops up is just what you said. Why haven't they taken further steps? Why aren't these people in jail? Why haven't there just been a military coup and they just get rid of these idiots, these criminals that are running our country? And speculation on my part but i think it has to go back to what is daily headlines in our news and that is the nsa because these people have collected data and dirt on everybody for as it turns out now since the 90s okay so you've got 20 years worth of information you've been if they can do that to you and me Right. Imagine what they have on these officers, these generals, these congressmen, these senators, right. these federal judges, okay? They've been collecting this information for 20 years, right. all right? So just put yourself in that position. They stop the nuke from going off, but maybe they won't take that next step because maybe they've been told, all right, yeah, we know you got us in a corner, but we're going to release this publicly, this right. picture of you or this text message you sent, or we know where – your wife sleeps every night. Right. We know where your your kids are. You know, we know where your right. grandkids are. Again, speculation, but that's what my gut deep down inside well, of me and tells And you know, me. you you hate to think that. You hate to even say it. You hate to speculate it. But you said something that's very amazing, and and, and that is, you know, it's just now in the headline news that the NSA is spying and the yeah. et cetera, et cetera. But it's been going on for two decades yes. before yeah. we had cell phones and text messages. Listen, I've got friends, Brandon, in law enforcement. You know some of these guys that I, I started with when I was a, a low-ranking cop. And then, of course, as I went up through the ranks and then other guys did, and I got out of it, went into the ministry, these guys kept climbing the ladder. Some of these guys are high-ranking law enforcement officers who I have spoken with just in the last few months. And they told me way back decades ago when they were in going to these FBI training schools and and counterintelligence schools as high-ranking officers in Florida law enforcement, they were told then. Yeah. They Listen, were told then that, that the federal government was collecting phone calls and recording them and saving them on mega computers. I've then. been saying this for years just as a crazy nut job civilian out here, and here's why. Because every time you see some high-profile case, what always, in, especially in the last decade with technology, what always cracks the case? 
All of a sudden, a text message from the past pops up. Right. An email from the past pops up. Well, if they're not keeping them, where did it come from? How did they get it? It didn't appear out of thin air. Right. They are monitoring, and the technology is so advanced that it can literally be traced to the sound of my voice. That's right. Now, that's all come out on public record. That's right. Voice recognition. When you you use the uh, text, talk to text in your cell phone, that goes through Google and then comes back to your cell phone and puts the words in the text. Right. Google is the CIA. Part of it. Yes. Okay, so just understand, they have your voice. Facebook, facial recognition. Every time you post a photo and you're tagged in that photo, that is facial recognition. Right. All of this stuff that's pushed on us, the social media, all of this technology that's forced on us, is be, it will be used to enslave us yeah. more yeah. than what unless, we are already. Unless we do something about it. And we- all right, listen, uh, we've got to hit this because Mike Shoesmith just emailed us this. Yes, he did. Okay? I saw it. So we're talking about this nuclear potential crisis that may have been averted and may still be in the works because one of these two nukes, if the one truly was detonated, still seems to be unaccounted for. Right. Okay? This is a WND article that was posted 26 minutes minutes ago, ago. and it's titled, Extraordinary Crisis Needed to Preserve the New World Order. Right. It's just what you said a few minutes ago. And it goes on to, and it's got the uh, the cover of Whistleblower Magazine down there, and and the the cover of it is the year of the manufactured crisis. Right. Right. Just think back about this year, what we exposed as 100 percent manufactured Boston crisis. Boston bombing, the Boston the, the bombing, school shooting in Connecticut. The school shooting in Connecticut is 99.9 percent sure that we know that the one man uh, did not go in there. The one kid did right. not go in there and shoot up that whole school. Right. Okay, there was other people involved. Right. All right. Um, uh, we hit the Boston bombing, uh, Benghazi. That wasn't this year, but just right. think about right. it. That was a fabricated story that came directly out of the White House. Yeah, and These Senator Lindsey Graham in the news. Are crazy. I'm telling you. These people are crazy. We are dealing with people that are not of a rational mindset like you and I. Right. They are not. Last week I touched on this. If you do some research into especially the last several presidencies, you find deep, deep ties to occultic activity. Right. You and know? that and that's that's out there for the researching. I mean yes, it's there. Yes, absolutely. And then you get on the biblical side of it and you think about our battle is not against flesh and blood. Right. It's against, you know it's against spiritual Satan, right? powers it's a of wickedness. Spiritual wicked. battle. Ephesians six. These people are un- operating under the spirit of Satan. Yeah. Right in front of us, right? You know. Now, th- this article talks about to the, you know the new new world order is has the potential of being derailed right now. I hope and pray that that's true. But if we're living in the times that you know of so many of us think that we're living in, right. they won't be derailed. Right. Now they will eventually, yes, right. at the very end. Right. But just just hang on, folks. We're in for a for a crazy ride. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's right. And just, you know, folks, keep your head on a swivel, spiritually speaking. Keep your that's eyes right. on the Lord. Keep your yeah. eyes on Jesus. That's it. I mean, the Word of God has, has withstood the test of time. It has presided over every funeral of every detractor for the last several thousand years. Yeah. And it still stands. And 2,000-year-old prophecies are still unfolding before our eyes. Israel is back in the land. The nations of Ezekiel 38, there's a 2,600-year-old prophecy. They're yeah. lining up. They're conspiring against Israel today. Yeah. The gospel's going worldwide by technology. That's Matthew chapter 24, verse 13 and 14. Uh, that's happening. The, the technologies of Daniel chapter 12 and Revelation are unfolding before our eyes. The times of terror and terrorism spoken of in Second Timothy in the last days, that's unfolding before our eyes read jesus's narrative of the end times in matthew chapter 24 and i can make a case that every single thing he said had to happen yeah has happened has happened has happened or is happening right right now right right before our eyes so you know if we're if we're there then you know like i say and then and then get my book (laughs) the (laughs) rabbi that found messiah and look what he said wow and look what's happening and and the the correlation coincidental and the biblical uh not only with just kaduri and his prophecies but the uh symbolism in uh sharon's death yes and the dates and the biblical numbers and times it's unbelievable dies on a sabbath while they're doing his funeral an earthquake hits israel eight Um, years and seven seven days days. seven years after kaduri's prophecy i know it's It's just unbelievable get the book and uh and and get the movie show it to your church and uh, there's no date setting it's not a crazy movie Uh, just just watch it you're going to be blown away by it folks thank you so much for being a part of the show today mallory mad southern woman god bless you (laughs) 
my good fr- my good friend and co-host, my son, Brandon Big B Gallops, and then to the Westermans all the way down from Toronto, Canada. God bless you, and to our studio audience. Brandon, you want to say something before we get away? You guys have a wonderful week, and please question our criminal government.